know, that, that, that becomes a very, very big concern for most mothers. So, uh, tell me one thing, from your point of view, Lara, how, how important it is for a child to actually, and you're a mother yourself, uh, and uh, how important do you think it's for a child to actually be able to free to go out to play, rather than sitting at home? You know, I think we grew up, both Mahesh and I, we grew up in a generation where you came back from school, you threw your school bag down, you ate whatever was put on the table for you, and then you were out of the door. You know, and then you came back when the street lights came on or when it was dark, getting dark, and you came back to do your homework, have your dinner, yeah. you know, prepare for school the next day and go to sleep. So we spent a considerable amount of our lives outdoors, especially Mahesh. You know, he played tennis since the time he was yeah. three years old. So he was on a court, you know, perpetually. But I really find ever since I did become a mother, you know, that one of the hardest things for us, one is, of course, an environment in a city like Mumbai in an urban landscape. Where do you send your child to play? Yeah. You know, so the children are either playing downstairs in the building, you know, or if you're living in a bungalow, sending them out, you know, in, out of the gate is impossible because it's right on the road. Otherwise, they go to the parks and play. Uh, so the environment, two, is safety. Is your child safe, you know, when they're out there playing? And three is exactly and rightly, as you said, you know, are they going to be exposed to, you know, kind of sicknesses, diseases, Seriously, things that, yeah. I mean, apart from minor cuts and bruises that children get, but the more, you know, riskier things, the more dangerous things like dengue, like chikungunya, yeah, like true. malaria. And so this is a very, very key factor for any mom. And I was saying it earlier on upstairs when we were having this chat. I said, one of the things is, you know, we get up every day and we have our baths and we put on moisturizers. Our children today are putting on, you know, mosquito repellent because you can't actually have a normal, regular day without being protected. And as you said, people are largely unaware about the fact That's that right. dengue is actually spread by a mosquito that, you know, operates, if you want to use the word, word in operates, daytime. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, thank you so much, Lara, for that. Doctor, you've been doing a lot of research on you know, child development and progress. Uh, what do you, how, how, much time, how, how much role do you think kids playing outdoors and going outdoors plays in the development of a child at an early stage? Well, I think it's a huge issue. There are two aspects that you talk of when a child goes out to play. One is the effect it has on his physicality, in terms of his activity, his fitness, in terms of obesity. There is a huge epidemic in the US where almost 30% of children are obese. And it's rapidly coming into India. We find yep. a contradiction in this country. We have extreme poverty, abject poverty and malnourished children. And at the opposite extreme, we have children from affluent uh, areas who are, who are obese. So in terms of obesity, it's a major issue. In terms of development of major and subtle motor skills, going out is important. Not just that, that is the health aspect. The other major issue is the psychological aspect that a child has when he goes out to play. In terms, of, in terms of winning, in terms of losing, in terms of waiting for his turn, following rules in a game, in terms of his overall development in that time, in terms of peer interaction, interacting with children from different strata, somebody who's affluent, somebody who's poor, taking care of smaller children, taking, following advice from bigger children, learning new games. So I think the, the potential for education in an unstructured manner is incomparable in natural everyday evening play. I remember when I was a small child, as Lara rightly says, we used to throw the bags and we used to go out and play. And my mother had made a rule that for one month before every term exam, I had to stop going down to play. And I used to be in tears. I, I used to wait. Now you have unit tests, you have exams every week. And I don't know where the free time is there for children to go and play. I have yeah. children who come from, go to school at 8 o'clock in the morning. They may have a formal football class before that. They are in school from 9 to 3. They come back home. They go for tuitions. And by the time they are back, they're exhausted. And there is no time for natural, unstructured play. If you talk about safety, you don't stop crossing a road out of fear of accident. You don't stop driving because you're going to get an accident. You just take adequate care, you take precautions. You don't stop what is so critical, what is so important for a child's development. I think that's a very interesting perspective. And uh, you know, Mahesh, uh, there's been a recent study by in India as well as some studies in uh, US as well, which say that when uh, they ask children as to what are your preferences today in terms of going out to play, going to a park, going to a mall, 20% of kids actually choose mall, and only 12% choose park. 
Now that's a bit of a you know real tragedy of our times. So just one thing. Suppose this is your time, and Lara was mentioning you were playing tennis since three. Imagine a childhood with video games for you. Imagine a childhood with digital for you. Could we have seen you becoming a world champion? What is your perspective on this? No, obviously not. I think uh, you know. I think a lot of this has to do with the upbringing itself. I think, like Lara said. Uh, both of us were brought up in an environment where we were always encouraged to go out and play. Obviously, for me, it was a little different. I had no choice. Uh, I was on the tennis court literally seven days a week. Um, you know, and that's that's how we bring up our daughter as well. You know, we're fortunate to have a garden, and you know, Saira started playing tennis now for the last few months. So, yeah, when she goes out, uh, you know, we make sure that uh, she's protected. And you know, just for the record, it's not only a mother's concern; it's a father's concern as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, and. Uh, you know, whatever we use, uh, have been using, hasn't really always been 100% foolproof. She still comes da comes back sometimes bitten, and you know, we're looking forward to trying this new product on her, and hopefully, you know, it fixes those problems. Oh, that's great. So, Lara, wh what do you think from being a mother? You know, what kind of awareness there should be created to mothers today about taking precautions? Because this is something which, as I said, 90% of India doesn't even know that dengue is a day mosquito. No, of course. You know, we've been talking about children and, um, you know, exactly like Doc said that it's very, very important. Most of your social, you know, interactions, the social skills that you learn, the, the, so, yeah, the social skills that a child learns in their formative years are learned on the playground. You know, rightly so, to share toys, to wait your turns, right. you know, to understand different uh, socioeconomic groups, to understand that, you know, children might come from different backgrounds, but at that age, they're all still kids. So this for us as a parent was extremely important you know that Saira learned these skills which is not something that we could teach her at home sure. and uh, Mahesh and I spend you know about eight weeks in the UK whenever he's there for Wimbledon and the Queen's tournament before that Queen's Club tournament and that was actually the only time when Saira was really little that we were able to send her out you know to play and I noticed a marked difference in the motor skills between the kids who you know that was a daily routine for them and okay. they spent all of that time in a playground and then what Saira was able to do at the same age group you know a marked difference in motor skills especially and Mahesh always has this argument ever since I've met him you know he always says it's very difficult in our country uh, to raise a singles Grand Slam champion you know he says because genetically yeah. for us and the environment we don't have the environment to be able to provide the kids you know the the the, the, facil the facilities and everything that they require to make it but I think this is one of the key things because like you said the kids would rather go to a mall go to a movie or sit with their iPads or some sort of yeah. a screen in front of them you know, so as, as a mom, for me, making sure that she gets enough playtime outdoors, like I said, that she's safe, yes, protected in a protected environment, but more than that, that the child is free to play, you know, and she's not worried about being bitten, being stung, or, you know, coming back sick, because now, I mean, she's in school full time, and I'm sure, pretty sure most parents over here who have children know the process of getting your kid into the school of, you know, at least the wish list choice that yeah. you have. And then once the children are in school, you can't really have them, you know, having a lot of sick leave and days and things like that off. So if a child is going to go out, going into an environment, which is supposed to be a fun, you know, relaxing time for her, and then come back sick, you know, it puts you into this vicious cycle where as a mother and as a parent, it's a nightmare to deal with. Definitely, yeah. So for us, you know, we were saying this earlier, and if I may say this right now, somebody asked me, so what have you been d doing for Saira? What have you been using? And I said that we were using, she has extremely sensitive skin, so I couldn't put anything directly onto her skin, skin yeah. for the longest time. So we used which for us was not easily available in the Indian market here, which was, you know, just the patches, patches. that went onto the clothing. Uh, but again, there's sometimes what we, what we did get over the counter in India was, you know, natural based, which, is I, was, which I was very, you know, specific on. But the citronella smell was so strong and overpowering that I couldn't sit next to her, forget about the child okay. living with it the entire time, you know. So that was a problem. And then you couldn't get anything in the market. So we actually used patches that we bought whenever we traveled abroad. You know, and it's an expensive uh, proposition. Yeah, I mean, for us, it may be easily, you know, not so bad and is probably affordable. But for most people, it was ridiculously expensive. That's right. In fact, it cost something 15 rupees a patch or something. Incidentally, while we're talking of fabric roll-on here, we also have launched patches which are just costing. And obviously, it's very affordable. It's a 75 rupee product for two children usage for a month. So what is your thing now as a mother for this product now? See, I'll tell you the three things that immediately stood out to me. One is that it's eight hours of protection. Yeah. You know, so it's not something that you have to constantly reapply. So once it's on, you know, you know that at least the child, while the child is in school for the entire time or going out to play, that the child is protected for that duration of time. Second, like you said, it's a fabric roll-on. 
So it's nice for me, it works perfectly because with a child with sensitive skin, I don't have to put anything directly right. onto her skin. The third thing, it's very simple, but only a mom can think of this. I like the fact that it has a loop on the top oh, yeah, because that mentioned. allows me to connect it onto my handbag or, you know, a her handbag. So if I'm on the go with my child and if it's not about leaving this at home, this goes with me no matter where and I in go. Fact, I think, so <laughs> thank you, Lara. That's a very important insight. And in fact, I'll tell you one of the reasons we have given this is because while we don't have it here, this is going to come with a keychain actually, this product. So that exactly the same thing, you can yeah. put it in the backpack or the school bag of your child and the right. child can carry exactly. it right away. Lara, where do you put the patch? When you put a patch on the child, See, normally put I put it on the back, you know, so uh, to the back. So also because when they're smaller, they can't remove it because it's yeah. something's How many times does it happen? Child comes back from school minus the patch? Sure, it, many times. That's yeah. a, so that's see, many times over. Yeah, so yeah. roll on, that risk is not there. Yeah, that's because children are extremely mischievous. Yeah. Yeah. If if she doesn't take it out, somebody else exactly. will do that for her. Yeah. So Mahesh, what do you think? Now, how does this uh, product look for you? You you feeling good about this product? That this is something really innovative? Yeah, as Lara said, I think you know there's uh, we're looking forward to trying it out, and uh, you know there's so many benefits to having not only a product that's affordable, but uh, you know, uh, like she says, no, we don't have to apply it on the skin and so on and so forth. So we're looking forward to trying it on. Thank you so much. And one last question maybe for Mahesh for you. I might steal some of Saira's and put some on quite regularly yeah, no, myself. We're going to give you a lot of them. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Mahesh, see, you've been in, I mean, you've been one of the best champions India has produced. Maybe for the media and for all of us. And since we are today talking of letting kids go out to play and live their life. In fact, the whole thought here is, Khul ke jiyo ghar ke bahar. You know, that's our whole brand thought uh, for this brand. What is the biggest lesson that you learned as a kid when enjoying outdoors? Uh... You know, I spent my whole life outdoors. I think um, over 50% of my life has been outdoors because I've been on the tennis court most of my life. So <clears throat> I don't know if that's a, it'll be a biased answer. I mean, I've, uh, it's not, uh, you know, you can't compare it to, I, can, I guess, everyday people. But, you know, for me, uh, you know, from playing tennis before going to school to going straight from school onto the tennis court with my dad, the, my whole life was outdoors. And, you know, these kind of luxuries that you guys are manufacturing today, we didn't have 20, 25 years ago. So you know, sure, I had all the diseases, all the kids picked up <laughs> while we were growing up and, you know, hopefully, you know, we can, uh, you know, slow that down at least. I think, I think Mahesh has raised a very valid point. I think we have to put our fears a little on the back, back stand, you know. I think we are becoming overproductive about our children. That's right. Yeah. So I think, I think it's a very uh, candid kind of conversation and I think, you know, Mahesh has given us some great insight of how, what it is all about to be outdoors. Some amazing insights which only a mom can give. Sir. Uh, that I can really, I mean, see, because we've seen, while doing this product, we did a lot of researches with moms. I can tell you some of the points that you're talking about all came out of that. In fact, this loop came out of that mom research only, which only a mom can think of. It never, it didn't strike us that we need to give a keychain. And I think, Doctor, thank you very much for making such a fantastic perspective on how we really need to put our fears aside. And I think the whole point which I just want to sum up and, uh, you know, close the discussion here is that for kids, it's very important to go and enjoy the outdoors and live a full life while in the parallelly working on their studies and trying to focus on career. We need to make them complete, rounded people. And in that, we have to put our fears out, outside, uh, fear side, and we need to tell them, khul ke jiyo, ghar ke bahar. So that's it from our side. Thank you very much. And I thank you all of you for being here in the discussion. So any questions, we can open the uh, house for discussion. Yeah, we can have a question here. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon to all. This is yeah. for we can have Lara Datta. I'd like to ask you how safe are these products for daily use? Is there any chemical inside? I'm, I'm not the manufacturer of the product, so that would have to be. So I'll give the answer, answer to that, maybe. Uh, in fact, maybe that's something which I mentioned in the beginning. It's a product, if you see on this pack, the biggest thing which is written on this is 100% natural. This product has no chemical into it, it's 100% natural active. It is made of uh, eucalyptus oil, in fact, inside. And it is also recommended by pediatricians and in the pack very clearly claims child safe. So this is a 100% natural active product. Uh, is there an expiry date for that? Uh, this lasts for how long? Two years. So it's a two year product. And my question to you is, there's uh, malaria, dengue, everything is going on. Is it good for your company? Okay, first of all, you know, we don't look at... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me tell you a thing. We don't take enjoyment of actually, you know, making people ill. That's not the business we are in. Because first of all, we are not only an insecticide company. And Godri is a brand which is what internally we call ourselves a 118 years young brand. 
and I think we don't need to introduce Godrej as a brand. Trust is something which we value a lot. And we are not only an insecticide company. But having come to your question, our mission is really to be in insecticides to make a category which helps India solve the problem of vector bond disease. And I can tell you, you talk to anybody in our company, that's something which as a social cause will live with. Now, if these diseases happen, it leads to more sale, that to mind is financial quarterly answers. But the bigger purpose for us for making such this product, we also made, for example, Goodnight Fast Card two years back, which is that paper product which burns in one rupee. We made it for rural areas in India. Now, the reason for making these products which don't exist anywhere else is that we want to help our country somehow fight this vector bond disease, which are becoming a very big challenge. Having said, yeah, when these product, uh, incidences happen, it do lead to pickup of sales. But that doesn't make us any happier. Hello? Is this product safe for newborn babies? Yeah, this product is child safe, but what we recommend for babies is the way to use it. This product is child safe. In fact, when we did a lot of researches, let's say if you have newborn babies in cots, what we'd recommend is, and we've seen a lot of consumer inside only, again, a mom told us that, you know how I'll use this product? That I'll put it four dots on the cot. You know, so you can do that very easily. But at the same time, on a newborn baby, you can put it in the cloth of a newborn baby as well. This is a child safe product. Hi. Is this product will be available online on like sites like Amazon, Flipkart? Yeah, this product has it. Have you already started selling? Yes. Yeah, we already got listed across all online sites, and the product has already got distributed across the country in a large part of general trade, modern trade, and yes, it's gone listing on online as well. Uh, one more. So Lara just said that the smell used to really bother her. So I haven't used this yet, obviously. So does it have a no. bothering smell? The eucalyptus. No, smell? it's a got a very different kind of a smell because you know again the fra the fragrance something which we tested. In fact, one of the biggest things that we tested very rigorously, we would have tested five different fragrances across consumers when we made product. There were five different fragrances, and finally this fragrance is one which is. And you know, you will never get a 100% score ever on any fragrance. Because fragrance is something which is very subjective. Like none of us, if, if 100 people are here, you will get maybe 10 to 15 different perfumes which you will like by people here. So that's one thing which we have to keep in mind. We have got a score of something like around, on what that fragrance, 75% people gave it number one score. So we go on with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much, photographers. Uh, I think you got your uh, numbers. So, we're going to soon play the commercial, the ad which has been created. It's an interesting ad for all the people who are sitting there. Let's enjoy the ad in the meanwhile. We set up the stage for your interactions.